When you experience an unusual health symptom, what's the first thing you do? If you're like most people, you probably pull out your phone and search the internet for what the symptom means. 65% of Americans actually try to diagnose their symptoms online. While it might seem easier and more convenient for us to play the doctor than actually visiting one, it's counterproductive and actually dangerous. Hi everyone, I'm Matt from eTactics, and today I'm going to tell you why self-diagnosing can be a problem. Before we get started though, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button below. While you're down there, hit that alert bell icon next to it as well so that when we post new helpful content, you get notified. The first issue with trying to self-diagnose is that it can cause stress. Search engines will bring up any illness with similar symptoms, so even if you have minor conditions, we could get results for a serious or life-threatening issue. This leads to panic, speculating, or assuming the worst. 74% of people who try self-diagnosing on the internet become stressed because of their search results. It's even more dangerous if people convince themselves that they have one of the conditions they stumbled upon on their favorite search engine, because they might even be trying to treat themselves in the end. This brings me to my next point, the danger of mixing or taking ineffective medications. Once people look up their symptoms, they could assume that they have a particular condition. This could lead to them trying different treatments themselves without consulting a doctor. One way they could do this is by taking over-the-counter medication. But medications have side effects, so if we don't need to use it, then we shouldn't. Taking ineffective medicine won't solve anything because we'll still suffer from the same ailments. And in some cases, taking the wrong medicine can make conditions worse or cause bigger problems. Some drugs taken together can actually result in harmful reactions. So people who already have a certain medication need to consult with their doctor before taking something else. Self-diagnosing could also lead to unnecessary costs, such as the cost of unnecessary medication. People might also schedule a visit with a specialist or insist that they need a particular test or procedure, even though it might not be necessary. All of these can be costly, and the bill will hurt even more if we realize later that we were just overreacting. It's important to talk with our primary doctor because they can recommend the best options for us. And for patients who might still feel worried, it's also possible to get a second opinion. One of the biggest reasons why we shouldn't try to self-diagnose is because of unreliable or misleading information. It can be difficult to determine the credibility of sources and false information actually spreads six times faster than the truth on the internet. Fake news usually has jarring headlines to grab attention, so these clickbait sources end up with a lot of views. This is dangerous when it's about health because it could lead people to actions that harm themselves even more. These viewers might also spread this information to others, causing stress for even more people. Spreading information by word of mouth has its own problems. First, this could come from fake news like I just mentioned. It's hard to verify what someone tells us when we don't know where they got the information. But it's also like a game of telephone. Even if what they read was true, they might have interpreted it differently than what was intended. When they spread this information, they could leave out key details that make a big difference. People also have different medical histories, so some things apply to people differently or whoever is spreading the information might have misunderstood what they read and skew it entirely. Now this leads me into my next problem, which is misinterpretation or confusion. For those of us who aren't doctors, we might not understand the terms related in our symptoms or the conditions that we find online. It's best to talk to a doctor because they can explain the scenarios in a way that most people understand. The final danger with self-diagnosing is neglect. I mentioned how looking up your symptoms sometimes leads to panic but it could also cause the opposite. Some people don't want to worry that something is going on bad with them and their health, so they pass it off as something minor. But it could actually end up being something more serious. It won't help to panic and assume the worst, but it also doesn't help to ignore the problem entirely. It can't hurt to visit a doctor just to be safe. Even though it can be inconvenient to have a medical visit, it's important to consult with a doctor when we experience unusual symptoms or feel sick. With so many false and confusing sources out there on the internet, it's difficult to interpret factual health information from fake health information. It can lead people to panic and try to treat their health in a way that's unsafe, or people might ignore that anything's wrong with them and just let their issue get worse. But seeing a doctor will help patients get a legitimate diagnosis with safe, reasonable, and effective treatment. If you'd like to learn more information about problems with self-diagnosis, reach out to eTactics. And you already made this far in the video, so you might as well like it, share it, and comment below. Well, go on. What are you waiting for? Subscribe to our YouTube channel.